Hello everyone, Ray Waldo, the Bishop of Technology here, and today, uh, today we're working with the ViewSonic G tablet. If you have one of these, it is a nice uh, Android tablet, but has a lot of good hardware, Tegra 2. Uh, but the problem is the tap and tap software that comes with it is, is trash. So uh, what we need to do is perform uh, the NV Flash. And so the way we do that is we hold the power button and the minus volume button. Uh, okay, we've got it on, but uh, we're going to power it off first. Uh, power it off. Hold the power button down long enough there to uh, power off. Okay, there we go. And press power off. Okay, and uh, we're going to do something called the APX mode, and APX mode will uh, put us in position so that we can use the NV Flash program. Now, if you need any of these files, they're available on my website, raywaldo.com. Hold down the minus and the power button, and the device will flash. I'll keep holding them, and it turned off. Okay, and that's what we do is just turn it off now. Okay, and once that's done, then you take your USB cable, connect it up to your computer, USB to the, to the device and to the computer, and uh, we move to a terminal, and in the terminal, we're going to uh, move CD to wherever you located the NV Flash files, and uh, I'm in ex executing this in Ubuntu uh, Linux, but it's uh, it works the same way with the uh, with Windows. It's just uh, you're using a batch file instead of. Uh, and I've already entered the command. In the case of Linux, we're sudo, which means to go to superuser dot forward slash nv flash space g tablet dot sh, and we enter that, and it starts the work, and we will see a little bit of information there and in a moment we'll probably see something on the G tablet but for right now it's not doing anything. So just watch what's happening there. And this is in real time so you get an idea how long it's going to take. It does take a little while. Now notice we've got a little bit of information coming up at the top here on the G tablet. Uh, it's hard for focus, but it says entering NV Flash recovery mode uh, slash NV3P server. And that's all you see for a little while here. And as it's loading all this up, now there are two versions of NV Flash on my site now. Uh, one will put a 250 megabyte uh, system partition, which is generally what most people will use, but if you're having problems after you've NV flashed and you still get boot loops or looping back to the three uh, birds or whatever, uh, it's possible that your hardware has some memory uh, uh, sections that are bad and 250 megabytes is not quite enough to hold the newer uh, ROMs. And some of the newer ROMs are actually larger than 250. So in either case, if you uh, have that problem, then uh, you might want to go with the 300. Now notice it says it's done, and it says please power off the G-Tab by holding the power button and close the terminal session. Okay, so we're going to power off the G-Tab, hold the power button down, and the screen goes blank and it starts coming back up again, and we let go. Disconnect the USB. Now, what we've done really won't change a whole lot because it's still going to come up in the uh, tap and tap software, which is not really what we want. So we're just going to let it go ahead and load up tap and tap, and then we're going to go back and do some different stuff. But what we have done, we have also we have in increased the size of the system partition and we've also loaded a custom recovery program called Clockwork Mod. 
and uh, this is a, a nice recovery program that will allow us to flash new ROMs and uh, do a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so we see Tap and Tap coming up. Now this is uh, uh, the trashy old software that comes with the, with the machine, but we have made some adaptations to it, so uh, it's not the standard and, uh, because the recovery is different. Okay, so as soon as it gets, gets up, we're going to uh, turn it off again. Just, just let it locate itself, clear it up. It takes a while for the first time for any of this to load up. Actually, to save a little bit of time, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, it doesn't have to load all this because we're going to write over it anyway. It's a good idea, but it's not the essential. So we're just going to hold the power button down for about 30 seconds and it's going to power off. Okay, there we go. Didn't take 30 seconds. Okay, so now this time what we're going to do is hold the plus button on the volume, the plus button and the volume and the power button until we get a, some words on the screen here. There we go. We've got this. Release the power button. Keep holding the plus button. Okay, and let go. And there is our recovery program. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go down to mounts and storage, and you can use the volume plus and minus buttons, or you can use these up and down buttons here. So we're going to go down to mounts and storage, and then hit enter. Okay, and at enter we want to go to USB storage, mount USB storage, and hit enter. Okay, And so we plug back up the USB cable. Okay, and We go back to our, our uh, computer and we have another screen open up, you see. Okay. Now this is the screen that shows what's on the device itself. This is, is it loads itself, calls the 12 gigabyte file system. Uh, I'll come in a little closer there so you can see what, what we're looking at. Okay, and this is the root of the device. Okay, the root of the uh, user storage of the device. Now, the file that I'm looking for is the Team DRS uh, beta. The current version is 1.3. I'm going to right click and copy that and then come back over here to this one and I'm going to right click and paste it. Okay, And it'll copy it, and there it is on the bottom line coming up, uh, and you see it, it's copying the file, and it's going to copy it to the root of our device. And When that copy is finished, now this version, uh, this particular version 1.3, is a beta version, and it is 213 megabytes as we get it. So it is a very large file. Okay, so now we can close all this. We're through with the computer. And we, of course, we always want to go down here to the device, and it's 12 megabytes. I'm sorry, you're not seeing that. 12 megabytes, we're going to right click and we're going to safely remove it. And again, this is a little bit different in Windows, but not much. You just see different icons. Okay, uh, safely remove. It doesn't want to remove. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is go over here to our device, to the G tab, and unmount. Okay, and that'll do the same thing. Okay, and it goes away on the screen. All right, so every now everything else is going to be done on the G tab itself. Okay, so we'll move down here, disconnect the cable, and what we want to do now is go down to uh, or actually we want to go back and we want to wipe the data and reset factory reset so we go down to factory reset enter that make sure we agree yes enter that okay and then uh, well I made one mistake I copied the file too quickly okay well anyway we'll come back I'm going to erase the file now that I, when I start cleaning I think We'll see. No, I shouldn't. That's right. It's still going to be there. It takes just a moment for it to format the data and get all of it, format the partitions, 
get it all done. I'm doing it in real time again, so you see how long it takes, and uh, you won't get anxious and if things don't happen as quickly as you think they should. Okay, so you see the little uh, Android ro robot there, and it's wiping and formatting the data and uh, all the different partitions that it's supposed to. And we're going to wipe the Dalvik cache and we're going to wipe the standard cache. That some people say the standard cache is being wiped in this particular uh, reset to factory anyway, but uh, it's just a good idea. It doesn't hurt. Do it a couple of times if you need to. And since this is the first time, uh, you, you also need to partition the hard drive, the uh, SD card. So we're going to do all those things. All right, now that wipe the uh, factory, and we're going to wipe the cache partition. Okay, and enter that, and tell it yes. Won't take but just a moment. That's why it's not a big deal. Go to advanced and wipe the Dalvik cache. Tell it yes. Okay. And partition the internal SD card. Okay. And we're going to set it to four four uh that'd be four gigs. Not because we're going to use four gigs, but that forces it to change. And we'll change this again. Uh, we do it. And it's going to set it to something we're not going to use, but that wipes the whole thing out, cleans it up, and that's why we've got to do it twice. We've got to add the file back on because we're wiping that uh, uh, internal SD card where we copied the file. I, it was not necessary to copy the file at the time. You want to do it later. Okay, so. so we're partitioning the SD card. takes a while. Just be patient. Okay, there we go. Alright, now we're going to do it again. Partition the internal SD card. And this time we want to set it to 2 gigs, 2048 megs, and 0 megs for the second. So we do it one more time. By doing it to the 4 meg, or four gigs to begin with, it forced to change and make sure that it wipes and then wipe it again and, and partition it to the correct. Okay. So the process uh, would be rather than to mount and copy the file previous to doing the partition, you want to mount and copy the file after the partition because you got to do it again anyway. Okay. So when this is done, we we'll go back to the mount mount up and copy the file again because it's wasted the first time. But you want to make sure that you've got your uh, GTAB in good condition ready to uh, to receive the files. Now uh, once we've done all this this will then be clean and, and fresh and it should not have any problem uh, accepting the, the file and flashing it. Should be just about through now. And if you get a couple of errors like this uh, SD extension not found or whatever unknown volume for that path, that's okay. We don't use the SD extension anyway, so it's not part of the, the plan, so don't worry about it. See how easy it would be to get ahead of yourself and say, hey, nothing's happening, something's wrong, 
it takes a while. You can time this this video and see how long it takes to uh, partition the SD card. It takes a while. I haven't really timed it, so I'm not sure exactly, but probably uh, three or four or five minutes, maybe. But we should be finished pretty soon, <laughs> I think. There we go. Okay, now. We're going to uh, go back to the mounts. So we go back one step and we go to mounts and storage. And we mount USB storage and plug it in. And it comes up on our computer. And we paste the file. I still had it in my uh, on my computer, memorized from the last time I copied it. So it's still on the clipboard. Now, one other thing that I didn't particularly mention is that before you start all this, you really should do a backup. But if you follow my guide, my guide includes all those steps and puts it in the right order. I wasn't following the guide. I was doing it by memory. So, okay, there we go. It's finished. So, once again, we're going to go back up here and unmount and disconnect the cord. And now everything is done. On the computer, we're going to do everything else down here. Okay, so we've already uh, cleared the device. We back up, and we're going to install Zip from SD card. Okay, enter that. Choose Zip from SD card. Okay, and there it is. When I hit it, it's, it automatically finds it because it's the only thing on that SD card. Make sure we agree. And we're starting to install the zip. And there's the Team DRH logo coming up. And you're about to install uh, Team DRH Beta. And we want to go to the next. And we agree to the terms. And next. And we agree to the kernel. And next. And here it's just giving us change log telling us what we're going to get and we want to install uh, full or customized installation ROM with gapps okay so we want everything so we're going to uh, required applications Amazon we want Amazon Chrome browser we want that we want Google Books Google Currents, Google Docs or Drive, Google Plus. Well, I like Google. I'm not sure what the Genie widget is, but we're going to try it. We can take it out easier and we can add it. Just take the whole thing. I think that's what the uh, music magazines, apps to delete. Yeah, we don't need the phone because we don't use the phone. The telephony provider. Now, actually, uh, I do use this. Because I use something called Groove IP, which is, uh, uh, and I think it uses all of this, and the voice dialer, and uh, I don't use the DSP manager, but it's a pretty cool thing to have there. Uh, voice dialer, DSP, email, we don't need the email. We use Gmail, don't need Exchange. We'll get rid of that. Uh, Elixir, I've forgotten what that is, I don't need it. I like the sound recorder. Uh, video editor, I'll probably never use it, but it's alright. Boot sound, uh, we'll let it do the boot sound. That kinda, sounds kind of cool. Uh, and after it installs, what do we want to do? We want to reboot after install. Okay, so there we go. And we hit next. And it starts installing the programs. And ROM 
and so when it gets through and it's giving me the progress bar over here that I'm uh, just barely getting started 0.383 percent there's one percent so it's going to take a little while it doesn't take as long as that and there it jump it's jumping real fast and it starts moving pretty quickly it probably takes about uh, three or four minutes to install uh, the whole thing but it's going to install the ROM and the G apps and everything and then all I have to do is reboot and um, do my setup and the Android setup basically just in, uh, set up my Wi-Fi and uh, set up my email account my Gmail, uh, Gmail account and then most everything uses the Gmail account uh, all the Google stuff we use the Gmail account to log into those so it's really pretty cool and uh, then I might have to add some more of my uh, applications my apps that I have used before because this is all clean now while it's doing it I'll just tell you also that uh, the Google Play Store where you get your applications if you install applications from one device they will be available on another device They're easy to find if you purchase an application generally speaking not all but most applications if you purchase an application on one device you can use the similar device uh, similar application on another device and they'll show up as purchased okay we're installing the G, G apps as you can see here and we're a little over halfway it's showing to here about 60 percent you can see the percentage over here on the side And again, I do everything in real time, so you see my uh, foibles and my mistakes, as well as how long it takes to do something. So uh, if you're uncertain, if you've waited too long, all right, there we go. It's rebooting automatically. Still get three birds, but we should see a different boot animation now. Now, the first time any ROM boots, right after you're installed, the first time, it can take several minutes, maybe up to five or six minutes, for it to boot completely because it's got to set itself up and do a lot of stuff internal. So, that's kind of cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, as I was saying, it takes a little while for it to boot up the first time, but then second and third and fourth and fifth and so on boots after that come up much, much quicker usually within 30 seconds to a minute so uh, according to the RAM, uh, ROM I mean and uh, also when you first install uh, a ROM after you do your setup it's going to take it's going to be slow because the ROM is actually still writing stuff and setting up configurations insert inside the machine itself that you're not really aware of and uh, if you're restoring applications, they're downloading from the Wi-Fi, so everything seems very, very slow. It's a good idea maybe just to set it aside for a half hour or an hour, maybe, uh, according to if you are restoring applications or not. If you're not restoring applications, about an hour. If you are restoring applications, you've got that all set up. It's going to take a while for it to download all the applications and install them. So. Uh, again, it's a good idea maybe just to set it up and let it set overnight and uh, do it on power and it won't go down on you. And uh, then the next, next morning it should be operating pretty well. So this is the first time I've seen this particular ROM and I don't know how long it's going to take to come up, but I suspect it's probably just about getting there. That's about what it normally would take. A lot of times you'll see a little bit different flash or something in the boot animation as it starts to move to another area.
There we go. Okay. Now, uh, at the Android screen, you just hit Start and start entering your information. Enter your uh, your Wi-Fi and then your uh, Android, and you're in business. Okay, so the next time we'll give a little bit of a review of what this particular ROM looks like, rather than watch me set up mine. All right, have a good night.